We tackle a whole mess of little things in preparation, getting this bike finally ready for paint. It's certainly not my favorite part of any of my builds, but it is extremely necessary and we have to tackle all those steps in this episode. It's definitely a lot of work, so commiserate with me and let's go. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I really hoped and I thought that I was going to be able to start painting in this video, but I had no idea how many little things were just adding up before I could get to that stage. Of course, I could have rushed through and just did a bunch of corner cutting just to get some paint on this, but I've already invested so much time and energy into this build that I felt like that would really be doing myself and you guys a disservice. There are still quite a few little unknowns about this build because I did build build a lot of it from scratch and even though I had everything kind of mapped out in my head you'd really don't know until you try to make it in the real world. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. You're watching me dismantle my old dashboard that was on the previous iteration of this bike. Thankfully I don't have to redo a lot of the electronics because I'm just moving that over from the old dashboard to the new one although I will have to customize at least some of this wiring. I've been going back and forth in my mind whether or not I should just do all of the electronics before painting or maybe do the painting and then do all the electronics and that's the route I think I'm going to go but I at least wanted to get some semblance of how that was going to pan out. And even though I had a pretty good idea of how everything was going to map out I just did it from my mind in the computer and that doesn't always translate to everything fitting exactly as you thought it would. So I figured it'd be more prudent of me to do all this before I started painting just in case Case I needed to modify something that I wasn't aware of. This bike is going to have a ton of LED strips going on and I'm really curious on how this whole dash piece is going to look because I want to utilize some of the semi-transparency of these acrylic panels, being able to see the lighting through them, I think it's going to look really cool. I also have some ideas on how to make the battery even more of a centerpiece but you guys will have to watch later on in this build to see what I come up with. I wasn't even sure if this very large piece PCB for the LED controller was going to fit in this little area that I designed to kind of house a lot of the dashboard components but thankfully it is looking like it's going to fit barely and not having me have to move this down into the battery area because I'm already concerned that that place might be a little too cramped as it is. As long as I can fit all the switches, all the knobs, the LED controller and everything in this little area I should be golden but if I can't then I'm going Gonna have to get a little more creative. The only component that didn't really have a great spot was this overly large USB box. In the worst case scenario I can just shove it in front of the LED controller although it does have lights on it itself and I kind of want to keep this area as open as I can to allow more light to emanate from within. I don't particularly need USB ports on my bike but it is a cool little addition and it can be handy if you're trying to charge things. I was also concerned that maybe through all of my bending I warped some of these holes and they weren't going to fit the components anymore but thankfully that wasn't the case. This was my first time seeing any of these parts populated into the acrylic panels and my first impressions was this thing looks awesome. When I first started this project my plans for the dashboard were actually much smaller and something that was mounted on the handlebars but as this project opened up and had more space I thought putting it into the frame was actually going to be more unique looking and possibly even cooler. Even though the electronics are far from completed and I'll have to do a bit more work on that dashboard, it is very pleasing to know that at least the top part of everything is going to fit okay. My next major concern was the actual battery compartment itself because I have to fit this massive buck converter including all of these gigantic connectors. All the wiring has to fit in this small little area at the front. I know you guys saw me earlier build this all up and actually ride it so you know that it all works but as far as everything actually fitting inside because I had tons of wires hanging out of it. I didn't have this butt converter in place so there were a lot of what ifs it doesn't fit inside of here. I gotta find some other solution then. A big part of me just wanted to go with it and hope for the best but I knew that it wouldn't be the smartest if I get everything all completed and painted up and then I go to install the electronics and then something major doesn't fit inside. It's just gonna be the safer route if I make sure 
sure everything actually fits before I start throwing some paint at this. Because of that, I had to throw this gigantic battery back in, which is not the easiest thing to do. This is definitely not a hot swap pack where you can just pull it out. I mean, this thing is very difficult to get in and out because of how big it is. This is a lot of wiring and a lot of connectors to stuff into this area, but I did manage to do it and I actually have a little more room than I anticipated, so that's always a good thing. This thing is absolutely stuffed to the maximum and the only thing I have to add next is the LED wires, but I am confident that everything is going to fit now, so that means I can actually start moving on to paint prep. Preparation for painting is definitely one of my least favorite things to do on any build that involves painting. There's absolutely no way around it, no shortcuts, it's boring, it's tedious, and it just takes a very long time. But it is completely necessary if you want your paint to come out even somewhat decent and have any chance of holding up over time. Even with spending all of this time on paint prep, I know it is nowhere near what I probably should be putting in. There's probably a lot of pro painters out there that would be be like no 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 you need to spend 10 20 100 more hours on this before it's even ready for primer and i would completely agree with them except i do have one thing on my side and that is the designs and aesthetics that i'm into generally lend themselves to hiding a lot of flaws matte finishes with slight textures and camouflage patterns allow you to get away with so much more than if you were trying to make something very glossy and shiny if you're like me in any way and you suffer greatly from perfectionism and finding a whole lot of unsatisfaction from anything that you are doing or making, then I do have one tip that has helped me a lot. For quite a while now, I have consciously and purposefully shifted my appreciation to things that would otherwise be seen as imperfect in my own mind. Without a doubt, there are many benefits towards pushing yourself and pressing your mind to open up and be accepting of even more things in this world. There is something extremely satisfying to me in seeking out and and finding value in what most other people would find as valueless or worthless. Just based off the simple principles of supply and demand economics, if you are purposefully seeking out and appreciating things that others do not demand, you are going to find yourself in an overabundance. Another benefit to this is that it actually works both ways like a mirror. Everything outside of yourself is also reflected within. If you can start digging inward for value or at the very least an appreciation for all those things that you considered flawed or imperfect or things you wish were different or changed, your past, what have you. Dumpster diving within yourself to sift among the trash and find the treasure is always beneficial because even though it doesn't look like it, there is value there, you just might not be able to see it. If you can find that within yourself, you should be able to see it in others and the greater world at large. Anyways, my apologies for the long rant, it's just something I've thought about many times Times, and if there is something in it that can benefit you, I think it's at least worth it to think about it. Also, as a disclaimer, I am a self-proclaimed idiot. I know absolutely nothing, so take that for what it is. Here I am just making some smaller brackets because I do have an idea to add another little aesthetic piece onto the swing arm, which you saw me break down before that. Now that the bike was fully in pieces again, I just spent a ton of time sanding over every little bit. And and just like welding this part up, it is deceptively large just due to how many different surfaces there are. If this piece were mostly flat, it would be pretty easy to prep because you just need to sand one surface, but because you're basically multiplying everything by four, it takes a lot longer to get into every little space and make sure it's all at least ready to accept some paint. At this point, I was trying to go as quickly as possible because my main goal was starting painting in this video. And I almost reached that goal except for the last day that I had to go into this video. It was very overcast and it looked like it was going to rain and I didn't want to chance it. And I really didn't want to make an entire video all about me just preparing to paint stuff, although it is a lot of work and it is part of the build. I do these videos mostly for you guys to show off what I'm doing, hopefully inspire you or motivate you to work on your own projects, but there is a selfish component where I am pretty much documenting 
documenting all the builds that I'm making. So even though there are less exciting parts, I still want to include it just for myself. But I can tell you I am very excited for the next episode because I do enjoy painting a lot and I can't wait to see how this turns out. I know you guys are very excited to see this completed, but trust me, I am way more excited. This has been so much work, so much time put into this, and I am very excited to see this thing fully completed, so please stay tuned for that. So here are all the parts ready to go, and I should be able to finish completely all the painting in the next episode. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate it. I am curious on what you guys think so far. What color or colors do you think I'm going to paint it? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned, and I will see you in the next one.